and thank you for joining us on the second leg of our journey discussing what it means to be a professional. Have you noticed how being professional most times seems to equal shutting down and not expressing emotions? Or maybe the opposite, an intense expression of anger or disappointment from a manager. Do you agree with these approaches? Is there something that we're missing? Listen to the podcast and explore these questions with us. From my corporate experience, what about appearances? You Appearances always need to to be there for any company in any what what do we do with that does being professional mean keeping up appearances but what do you mean by keeping up appearances going back to your uh, observation of people perceiving being professional as hiding emotions like not expressing their emotions so for me when someone does that it's like uh building a facade yeah like like Putting out, putting out an, an appearance. For example, the, the the boss who or the employee who's not expressing an emotion. In my opinion, what what that person is doing is putting a building a facade. Like I am professional. I am being tough. I am being. Uh, I'm um, grounded. I am not showing what I feel. It's pretty much what you are saying. What I'm trying to say is that. Some people believe that these appearances are necessary. So what do we do? Because appearances for any company are necessary. You don't want to let out too much, even for a person, even on a personal level, even when it comes to a relationship with this like toughness of like not not showing. And for me, the key, I think you were starting to touch on it, is is how you let those emotions out. Because your example with um, with the lady and the angry boss, like and screaming, I actually agree that is not professional. Okay, I understand the person was angry, but that's not a way to express that. So what do what do we do? I, I mean, is there is there a benefit to to keeping this? Um, the, I'm, I'm thinking of the fine balance. I feel like there's a fine balance between what you said to express your emotions and this. Uh, appearance that every company, every office has, in my opinion. What I'm understanding from you is kind, kind of mirrors the, the, the discussions I have with my clients. Um, and it, it, it always seems to be like it's one or the other. So either I'm keeping an appearance, which for me means I'm shutting down, I'm not showing my emotions, and, and, that, and, and, and then eventually I learn not to feel them because I need to keep the appearance. The, the other side is uh, I'm shouting at people all the time or I'm crying or whatever. So um, wearing my emotions on the sleeve, if, if that's how, how you express it. Um, and for me, it's neither, <laughs> really. Um, and for, for me, it's like the third way. And the third way means I can feel my anger, my sadness, my confusion, and, and I can feel it now. And then I have this, this conscious mind to know, okay, if, I, if now is a good situation to somehow communicate my anger or my fear or my confusion. And sometimes it's not a good, not a good situation. Um, one of the, the experts I really love, uh, Schulz von Thun is his name, and it, he's, he's probably only known in, in the German-speaking countries. Um, and, and he asked a question that I really, really appreciate. And his question is, what does the situation ask from me? What is the situation I'm in and how can I be helpful and supportive of the whole situation that is happening right now? And so this means I can be in touch with myself and I can be in touch with the situation that is evolving while I'm there and then I have this consciousness, this also experience, this understanding 
of what this situation needs from me. And sometimes it needs a clear, oh, this now makes me really angry, or I'm confused about this answer, or wow, if you say this, I can feel fear coming up. But I don't have, you know, but when I'm angry, I don't have to shout at you. I can tell you that I'm angry um, and tell that in a way that is, that's clear, but it's not threatening. And, and so it's that I can deal with my emotions with myself and neither cutting them off nor um, just throwing them out there, neither is dealing with them. So when I'm cutting them off, I'm not dealing with them because I'm not feeling them. Um, when I'm just putting them all on you, I'm not dealing with them either because I'm, I'm kind of trying to get them off me and onto you. Yeah, I think this is what I've noticed that nobody's teaching us. I don't know how else to say it. Nobody's no, teaching you how to, yeah. how to walk this line because it's a fine, very fine balance and unfortunately you know in the u.s in my opinion being professional has become uh congruent with shutting down so to speak like not or expressing emotions not in the not in an efficient way and not only that but for me here what what shows uh, a lot is the balance of like power and weakness if i show emotion i'm gonna be weak and that may takes me to the following question i had for you do you think there's a difference between an employee being professional and a leader being professional because i feel like a, a leader you know like a manager a, a director an executive even more professionalism kind of shifts meaning because they cannot display weakness and showing any kind of uh, of emotion, but not necessarily anger. Like that, that is not weakness because anger, as you were saying, is is a threatening emotion. Uh, it, it's meant to it's meant to kind of scare the employees, right? That's that's really the strategy. When the boss gets mad, it's really like to intimidate the employees. I would dispute this just a little bit. Um, I'm, I'm not questioning that there are leaders out there who use or who, who threaten their employees. And I would say anger is one way. Being disappointed can be another way. I'm so disappointed in you. I really did expect you to do this, but you didn't deliver. And I'm so, so disappointed in you. That's like that worse be than being angry. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. So, um, so, so it's not so much the emotion. It's not so much the emotion, but it is the intention that's behind it. I can threaten you with ignorance. So the, int the, int the intention is, is the driver, the driver, really. And then I can use the emotion to threaten others. Anger has, has just gotten a bad reputation, really. And, and emotions in general have gotten a bad reputation. So because they, they were used in just not helpful ways or threatening ways or demeanoring others in, in ways that demeanor others. So it, it's always a power game. And... A lot of people go into a conflict with the idea or a lot of people look at conflict with the idea that when I show my emotions, I'm weak and then I'm losing, I'm losing the power game. So showing the emotions, um, we have attached the idea to it that showing the emotions, we are losing the power game. So behind all this is what is my intention? And, uh, and, and behind that is then the power game. So when I go into a relationship and a communication is a relationship, when I go into a communication relationship, 
with the intention that I need to stabilize myself through a power game. I can use either emotions or I can shut myself off and then, and then uh, be calm in the sense of because emotions are potentially weak. So I'm not showing any emotions. So I'm, I, I go in with this idea that shutting off and not showing emotions is um, giving me more chance to win this power game. Uh, I totally understand your, your explanation and I agree to it. And actually I found another article and uh, I'm gonna read to you briefly uh, what it said. It's uh, examples of professional behavior include but are not limited to showing compassion for others, responding appropriately to the emotional response of employees, customers, even family members, demonstrating respect for others, demonstrating a calm, compassionate and helpful demeanor toward those in need being supportive. I did like the this set of uh, behaviors. Uh, what what do you think? Is should a professional show uh, compassion? Should a professional uh, be supportive? Are these qualities of a leader more than a professional? I would agree with those qualities for any human being, really. So you have the profession um, of being humans. <laughs> <laughs> well. I know that humans got a really bad reputation and being professional often comes with this myth that once I'm a professional, I'm better than a human being. <laughs> um, it's like evolving. You know, I, I first I was a human, then I was an employee and then I was a professional. And then I was a leader and an executive and then CEO. So I, it's like evolving in, in, in the human rank. Um, at least quite quite a few people. It's but, homo but sapiens, that, sapiens, professionalist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then executive. <laughs> yes, it's homo sapiens, what? sapiens, professionalist, executivist. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is the new human race. <laughs> yeah. This, this, this is our growth path. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, when it when it comes, if it comes really with a, a few executives I know, they they are so human, and this is really what makes them so extraordinary. Because th then they are then they are really really good. They have created this space within themselves, and they have realized that when they feel their emotions, they have found the path to what compassion means. It means I am in touch with my feelings. I am in touch with the situation. I am in touch with all, all the other people that are in the room. And I don't have to react on anything of this. But I can effectively, constructively, appreciatively, with respect, I can act and I can communicate clear and respectfully and appreciating. And this is such a high skill to be in a situation and to feel what I feel, what I feel, and to feel what's happening in the in the room here, and to feel where the other people are. But what does that have to do with the, the tasks that we need to accomplish and the targets that we met and the profits we need to do this quarter? Why do we need compassion it's not for that? A contradiction. <laughs> Why do we need compassion for that, Madhu? We need the sales. <laughs> and, and I still can set goals. It's so interesting, isn't it? Isn't it so interesting that we think it as a contradiction? Yeah. That we still think that compassion is this fluffy, emotional, we just love each other kind of thing. And it's not. Compassion it, just means I feel what I feel. I feel what the situation is. I feel what the em emotions are in the room and I can, I almost tend to say still know what needs to be done now, but I can do it in, an, in a good way. 
in a compa- like in a respectful way, like in a appreciative way. This is really almost a mantra that I have with my clients. I can be, I can set hard targets in a very respectful, clear, and appreciative way. And and for a lot of people, this sounds like a contradiction. It sounds like like white. Yeah. Uh, well, why do I need to do it in a compassionate way? All I care is about the numbers, the sales, and the profit. Why? What? What do I gain if I foster this compassionate environment? I don't care about <laughs> about people's feelings. You have just listened to the second episode of Madhu Einsiedler's improvisations on growth series that takes a deeper look at professional behavior. Has your definition of being professional shifted? Do you recognize unprofessional behavior from former or current peers and managers? I encourage you to email Madhu at madhu at insiedler.at and share your opinion or engage on her social media on LinkedIn and Twitter.